Hello Rise Up Visionaries, I'm Susan May and I'm here to share my random ramblings and anything that goes through my brain to inspire you to turn, tune into your intuition so you can begin your journey of unplugging. So today the title of my live is going to be Live and Learn um, because this week is all about unschooling and I would say the essence of the philosophy behind unschooling is that living is learning. We actually cannot stop learning. Humans are wired to learn. It's what we do. Um, and one of my favorite unschooling resources, um, her name is Sandra Dodd, and um, she is just a very generous person. She has pretty much dedicated her life to sharing resources and pooling great writing about unschooling um, and she on her birthday now is like an unschooling holiday and they call it the learn nothing day and it's a joke because oh there's our neighbor's dogs the joke is is that it's not really possible to learn nothing so on this day everyone tries to learn nothing and then everyone comes on and posts all the things that they learned accidentally because they couldn't stop learning if they tried. It's like breathing. Um, so it's just um, really something that happens when we send our kids to school is that we start thinking about learning as something separate from the rest of our life and that's how our kids look at it. Um, but in fact, we are always learning. And actually, that was Sandra Dodd's Yahoo group. I joined a Yahoo group way back in the day, 14 years ago. Um, and that's what it was called. It was called Always Learning. Um, so most lessons, I feel like we need to learn over and over again. Have you ever noticed that? That um, it's difficult for sometimes for us to grasp something. So. How many times some, do we need to make the same mistake? Do you ever feel like, oh my gosh, how many times am I gonna have to learn this lesson? Um, when Marisol was little, almost every day, she would um, have a meltdown when I didn't feed her soon enough because I am just not really a great morning person and I'm slow moving, especially probably after Jerry was born. I'd be tired and then she would just cry and you know have a meltdown I'd be like oh, I didn't feed her enough or I didn't feed her soon again soon enough and it was like seriously every day <laughs> and you'd think I would learn that lesson or how about how much time it takes to get out the door with little ones or to get someplace how many times do we have to learn that we really need a lot more time than that so learning never stops and um, one thing that my business mentor um, has said is that we either win or learn. It's not win or lose. And this is actually a quote from Nelson Mandela that he loves to share. And Nelson Mandela said, I never lose. I either win or learn. And I think that is a very beautiful perspective to take because it means whenever, you know, if we make a mistake or things don't go as planned, that we just pick ourselves back up and we think to ourselves, what did we learn from this and how can we do better next time? Um, so another thing I'd like to share about is um, Carter because I've talked about my big kids and unschooling and Carter is our little one. He's five years old um, and he's on the autism spectrum. Um, and so I think it's pretty fascinating to examine how this unschooling way of life impacted how we parented him um, and first of all I'm really grateful that he's our third child because we had so much of our parenting philosophy like solid and in place by the time he came along um, so we had much more patience for him we had um, our expectations of you know of children and of how we wanted to respond to them um, were how do I say it? Um, basically, I had a belief that I knew he was doing his best. So whatever he was doing, I wasn't comparing him to other kids or comparing him to how, what, how my other children had developed because I knew he was doing things in his own way, in his own time. Um, so we really didn't rush to you know, find out what's quote wrong or you know, what can we do. Um, we were very patient. Um, 
And by the time he was about three and a half, we finally felt more of an urge to seek some more information and seek support. Um, and I read a book around that time, and it really just kind of scared me. It just made me feel urgent. Like if I didn't find the right resources or the right people right now, then I wasn't, um, you know, that I was going to ruin Carter's future or something, or I wouldn't, he wouldn't be able to get back to reach his full potential or whatever, you know, it was very fearful based. Um, and so that didn't feel good. And I think I have shifted a lot since that time. So that was probably, that was almost two years ago now. Um, we did start seeking some services and it was really ironic because we finally had him tested through the public school system. And, you know, we were not surprised when they said, oh, he tested high on all the autism, um, you know, scales or whatever, because we knew, you know, we were answering the questions and we're like, yes, we, we understand. Um, but the ultimate irony was we, he finally was going to receive services through the public school system up in Virginia. And literally the day he was supposed to start was the day that shutdowns began. Like exactly. I think it was March 17th. Um, and it was like, it was kind of funny for me because I had um, reservations about putting him in this program. It was going to be pretty intense, like three or four days a week, um, like all morning and nothing like I've ever done with any of my kids. And so I was hesitant, but I was willing to try if, if it helped him, you know? And I was like, wow, that's, that's a sign if you ever heard one, the whole world, <laughs> the whole world <laughs> shut down. Oh, Yoshi, be quiet. So... Anyways, oh my gosh, let me see. Come here, Yoshi, come here. You're going inside, come here. <laughs> oh my gosh, she's going in. Um, so, anyways, what have I been doing in that time? All that time, right? And I think it would be really easy for me to be angry and bitter and like, oh, because of what went on in the world, my child didn't receive services or, or to feel guilty. Like, why didn't I do certain things in all this time? It's been how many months now? Like 20 months. Um, but I really have a, a sense of peace about everything. Um, Carter is such a happy kid. And I think a lot of it has to do with our home life, that we are very relaxed, that we support him um, that we really get his wants and needs filled. Um, and I think a lot of the care providers that have met him, um, you know, OTs, uh, speech therapists, um, the people in the school system, they really enjoyed him. They were like, wow, like he's just such a happy, fun kid, you know? And I know I can't take full credit for that. I would never say that I can, but I really think that when you meet a kid's needs, which is what I learned to do through unschooling, that's that's how we can help them be their happiest self and healthiest self. Um, so I have a real sense of peace about that. Um, today he had occupational therapy. It was the first official session. Last week we had um, like an assessment and both went really well. They're a lot of fun. She is a very relaxed person. Um, and so I'm enjoying her and, you know, she's showing me like ways to play with him and things I can do with him. And all of it, I kind of probably could have done and figured out on my own. And so I could feel really guilty about that, right? Like, why haven't I been doing that stuff? But instead I'm just excited because I know that going to this occupational therapy now is going to motivate me. I see how much fun it is to interact with him and do these things and it motivates me to want to do that. And I don't think that's a bad thing that I need, you know, that we needed some inspiration, that we needed some outside support. Um, I think it's a good thing. Um, and so anyways, I would just say that unschooling works for all children, all people. Um, I'm still learning now. I'm learning so much about starting a business and starting a membership. And that, you know, when I get down in the dumps, I live and learn. I don't lose, I just learn. Um, and so it's such a great attitude shift and um, mental shift to make, a paradigm shift that you never lose, you just learn. Um, so I hope you can really take that to heart. 
Um, if you haven't entered my book giveaway yet, it's all about unschooling. And as you can see, I just love unschooling. I could talk about it all day long. Um, I really feel it's not to me about education, quite honestly. It's about how we live and how we raise our children. Um, and it reminds me of when I was a Hypno Babies instructor, and I'm gonna have to dig this up, but my logo for Hypno Babies, the, the motto was peaceful births, peaceful parenting, peaceful world. And um, the person that helped me make the logo said, well, what does that mean? Like, if everyone had Hypno Babies births, then we'd have a more peaceful world. And you know, I kind of laughed about it because I think it's fun to have a light sense of humor and kind of, um, you know, not take, take oneself too seriously. But quite honestly, I really do believe that like, for one, it's not about having like a natural childbirth or having the perfect birth, not at all. It's about being aware of like what your choices are, of being aware of what other forces are at, at work when you enter a system and what do you want and how can you best get to that place that you want to get to. Um, so I know this is, seems like it's going a little bit off track, but my point being that yes, if we all really took responsibility for our hearts, for our minds, for what we're learning, for, for how we're living, then yes, it would be a more peaceful world. And I think those philosophies, the, the Hypno Babies philosophy, um, unschooling, if we were doing things, these things, more people, more of us, and of course I never advocate for force. That's why I like to just live my life as an example and inspire people. And the other thing I want to say is if your children are older or if you didn't have picture perfect births, that's, I'm not sharing these things to ever make people feel ashamed or guilty or um, bad about themselves because that is not the point either. The point is that we start now. Same with Carter, right? I could feel horrible for the, about these past 18 months like, oh my gosh, I should have been doing more. We should have tried harder, this and that. No, we start today. And so whatever, wherever you are on your journey, I am here just to share what's worked for, for me and if it makes sense to you, if it inspires you that you take that lesson and you learn and you go from there. So I think I'm done rambling. That is a lot of rambling. Um, but yes, I love unschooling. I think um, I look at my kids and I am just in awe. I mean, I want to say I'm proud, but I don't want to take ownership of the people that they are. Like, I just am so inspired by them and I just love them so much. And I will say like all of these kinds of ideas, um, it's a lot of investing your time. A lot of it is unlearning. So learning, it's not just learning. You have to unlearn things and you have to relearn things constantly. That's what life is all about. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this rambling. Um, thanks for watching. Please write, like my Rise Up With Susan May page on Facebook. You can find me on YouTube so you can speed this up and watch it faster. Um, please enter the book giveaway by liking my page, liking the post, and if you share the post um, and let me know, I will put your name in more than once. Um, most importantly, share anything that inspires you so that the good energy and love and vibes can just spread like wildfire. And remember, be bold, be brave, be you, because who else is there to be? I love you all. I'll see you on Friday, and it will be a surprise time. Um, yeah, let's do it. Friday. Bye.